Yo, what's up? Welcome back to the White Pill Podcast. Kevin, Josh, your host as always. Today we have a very, very special video. We're explaining what we call the pill spectrum or the pill compass. You know, typically with the white pill, people think, oh, well, you're, you're black pilled or you're red pilled or you're blue pilled or you're white pilled or you're purple pilled. What we look at it as is there's a spectrum of you're a little bit of each and depending on what it is. And we came up with what we call the compass, which is a really easy way, a more digestible way to really figure out where you're at in terms of your worldview and the way in which you're going through life based on, the, on your worldview. Okay, so the idea where we came with this from is the political compass. I'm sure some of your favorite YouTubers have probably taken it where they say, are they libertarian, authoritarian, you know, left, right, all this other stuff. We take a very similar path. And the reason that we came up with this is because we see with the red pill community, especially, they say, okay, well, we have this truth and, you know, you're, you have a truth. And then they try to build a philosophy just based on that, which uh, for reasons I won't get into here, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So we're trying to, because when you look at red pill community, red pill influencers, you know, these guys talking about these things that have a lot of good ideas, but there's a lot of differences in how they navigate through this new reality that's given to them, right? Based on the reality of how society works, the reality of, of women, for example, once you're given this reality, a lot of guys react differently to it. And this compass is really made in hopes of helping you navigate through that reality. All right. So let's just get right into it. First off, let's just start off with red versus blue, blue pill, red pill. All right, so we're just going to draw a line here. And then, thank you, Mr. Assistant. Yes. <laughs> Trust us. Well, I got to do explanations. So yes. He's got to do the drawings. So we're going to do blue at the top, and then we're going to do red here. Okay, and do you want to write what each, or I'll tell what each thing is. Yeah, so, man, you just write it down. Like yeah, yeah. Yep. so we have basically uh, red versus red versus blue. So what you're used to is the red pill being the reality and blue pill being all these like, you know, mislabeled things of like what you're supposed to do in the dating world. Um, but this goes beyond just dating. This is kind of like the world as we see it. Uh, we do need the guide. I forgot. So I need you to write what the uh, x-axis oh, is, sure. right? So I'm uh, sorry, y-axis. So y-axis is the worldview. It's how you view the world. And it makes sense, you know, in the movie, you take the blue pill or you take the red pill and it's literally the lens that you see the world through. So if you're blue pilled, that means you see the world with the blue lens. And if you're red pilled, you see the world with the red lens. And that's where you take, um, you know, a choice of which path to take. Now, because it's a spectrum and we'll get to the compass and grid, it's not like you have to be entirely one or the other. And as we'll show, you can be anywhere along it and it can be a mix of the two. Like, you know, some people would say purple would be in the middle, um, but you can be anywhere along this. But if you're truly on the ends, you know, that's what we'll talk about here. So well, we're going to start with this blue pill and blue pill would be uh, imagination. So imagination is anything that's a belief, that's something that's not grounded in reality. It could become reality. It could be discovered by science as something real. But at the moment, it's a belief. It's a imagination. It's a virtual reality. It's something that you just, you know, put yourself into in your mind. And so, you know, that's what movies are, Hollywood movies. And so why Blue Pill, you know, when we talk about in terms of dating, why it doesn't work is because it's imaginary. It's a Hollywood version of it. It's why it doesn't work. But there are good things to it. You know, there's imagination is good by itself. Um, it's good to believe cool things. It's good to uh, have faith in things. It's good. Some of these things are good. But then there's the drawbacks that, you know, of Hollywood movies having misrepresentation, cults. There's always good and bad that come with imagination. Then on the other side, you have red, which is reality. Okay, so reality is uh, how things actually are. Now, reality is not just, you know, what you think reality is. It's not my opinion. It's not Kevin's opinion. It's what actually is. And so we use science to determine that. This is the truth, as they say, but we are limited in that. So even science done right tells us a little piece of reality, but even science, all of science is, doesn't know a lot of things about 
reality. So this is really our interpretation of it. Anyone who tells you they know the truth doesn't really know that because we're still learning about it. And especially in dating is a problem because the science is terrible. It's not even like any other science. It's almost non-existent. I'm a man of science and I looked at studies and they don't mean anything because in dating, one, there's too many factors, but two, you can't really see because dating has so many variables, but at the end of the day, it's two people having sex. And unless you can see the people having sex, they could lie about it. So that's the only way to prove that two people are truly attracted to each other is to watch them have sex. And you can't do any scientific testing like that. So our reality is limited to our understanding of biology and you know our belief that it's a belief that it crosses over into the dating world. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're gonna talk about here in terms of red versus blue. Um, anything you wanna to add to that? Yeah, the closest thing, and this is where the red pill talks about a lot, is hypergamy, right? Hypergamy, the definition of it is marrying uh, above your status. And there's, you can actually debate all day as to how much hypergamy has to do with it, but I think everyone who's technically red-pilled will agree that hypergamy is definitely a big part of it. It's just a question of how much. Some people think that it's like everything. Other people uh, think that it's a part of it. And then based on hypergamy, some there's also different aspects too. If some guys, people think, you know, hypergamy is more looks-based, right? Or some people think it's more status-based or money-based. Um, but regardless of that, you know, we'll... Yeah, so, so, so we'll just kind of dive in basically. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, so actually I probably surprised you by saying this, that I do believe hypergamy is the end all be all. But, but I think what's misinterpreted is, like you said, looks versus money status, the ingredients of hypergamy are up for debate. The idea that status as a whole uh, operates is, I think, indisputable. In my opinion, it's someone, when you're looking for a mate, whether it's a man or woman, you're looking for someone equal or better than you. You don't, nobody wants to date down. Men don't want to date women that are unattractive and overweight. Nobody wants to date down. Everybody uh, dates based on status. So hy men are hypergamic towards biological women that are more sexually appealing. They're hyper hypergamic. I think I just made that up for it. But they, they want to increase their status by getting with hotter women, yeah. right? So everyone's always trying to increase their status. Um, so hypergamy 100% is correct. The problem is that guys view it as you can't change it, which is totally false. You can definitely improve your hypergamy status whatever, and the ingredients that make it up are totally debatable, which elevates your status more. And then the last thing is, uh, it's not operating necessarily on reality, but the perception of reality. So status is, you know, women aren't like, they don't necessarily see a guy's bank account and know that he has more money. So she goes with him because he's higher status. She sees him driving a fancy car. She hears him lying about you know, he could be lying about his businesses and his money and whatever. So people can fake status and it's effect. It works. It's why scams work, right? So uh, hypergamy does and nothing really operates on reality how it is. It's the perception, how we perceive reality. You can lie and fake your way through that. I don't believe in that. You don't believe in that, but that's the, that works, right? So if we're coming down to it, um, the red pill is operate on a hypergamy, but it's also the perception reality. And that's where, you know, you can fake things. You can use your imagination. So it's, it's kind of a spectrum of where you want to be on it. And also this, this spectrum on this Y axis is way more subjective, I would argue, than it is objective in a few senses. In the sense that it is the worldview, there is objective reality, but the issue is we don't know 100% what objective reality is. Yes, exactly. So it's more so based on, okay, based on the reality that has given to you to, based on what you can best perceive is probably most likely the reality. What is this, right? So uh, it does come down to, you know, being blue pilled. It is imagination versus reality from a subjective sense. Now, based on this, because then the reason I think it's important for me to bring that up is because, you know, we automatically just assume that the more red pilled you are, like the better that it is, the more truth that you're revealed to. That's not necessarily the case because you know, it's also based on personality. So if you're a very extremely like, you know, pragmatic, practical person, fine, you're going to be technically more based in reality. Right. But that leaves, uh, unfortunately that leaves a void for imagination being, you know, um, more imaginative about like how you want the world to be. Yeah. Right. More, more of a visionary, more visionary. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people who, Let's say, because we were talking about this earlier before we started recording, 
there's a lot of people throughout history, you know, red pill versus blue pill is not just based on the current culture. A lot of it has to do with the human condition itself, which is why hypergamy is such a big part of, of the red pill, right? So something that is based on the human condition. So depending on what area or what time period you were at, um, so for example, the 1800s, right? With Thomas Edison, with him, you know, he was operating off of a very blue-pilled world. It's like, Thomas, you think that you could harness electricity for power? No freaking way. But, you know, so technically he wasn't very red-pilled in that sense. He was in this kind of imagination land of what he wanted to achieve. But eventually he did achieve that, and then that became a red pill reality over time. Yeah. Right? And I think also it'll help to kind of move into the full compass because what we're missing here is that these are a worldview. It's a lens. It's not really how you operate within it. It's not a path. And we're going to get to how you operate within it, which is the mistake of everyone saying they're red pilled because red pill is just how you see it. It's not how you utilize it. And so let's, you, let's get red, into the... Red pill is technically almost impossible to adopt as a philosophy on its own. Because Red Pill, you, you go off the Matrix movie, he's basically saying this is just the truth, the truth of reality. Well, the entire, the, word, the definition of philosophy is to try to seek the truth and the reality of existence, right? So you can't just say Red Pill philosophy. It's like, oh, truth philosophy. No, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's like science philosophy. Yeah, it's it doesn't like, make what? sense. The problem is that we don't know that. Or if you're just saying like evidence-based science, it's like, that's that's what science yeah. is. <laughs> so I think it would help to just yeah go along yes. and explain the path because right. this is where yes. we're going to get into. So it. this is where this is where things get interesting because you've definitely heard of red pill and blue pill, um, black pill you probably heard of, but this other part over here well, which we call the white pill you definitely probably all right. Not. So tell let's talk about the black pill first. Sure. Let me just write this down. All right. So I'll start. Sure. Um, so with the black pill. You may have heard, it, may not, but basically uh, it's a nihilistic viewpoint on taking the red pill or taking the blue pill to the black side is where you uh, either, you know, nihilism giving up, you know, thinking that it's all pointless would be, you know, you're giving up on yourself because the red pill, uh, you know, you're red pill, then, you know, hypergamy is a problem. So you give up. Um, or you turn evil and you give up on society and you say you're nihilistic in the way that I'm going to get mine, screw everybody else. So you become more selfish and you, you give up on society. And so you're black pill, like, I'm just going to sleep with as many women as I can. They're not people. I don't care who they are. And you become black pill in a way that you just dominate the world and you don't care about anyone else because society is pointless. And here, here's another thing too, before we dive into the black in the white here, because this is really yeah, you talk, let me fix it. sure. Okay. This is really the important part of the compass, right? Because again, you've definitely heard of red pill versus blue pill, but the thing is, there's plenty of guys out there who are red pill. There's plenty of guys out there who are blue pill. All right, but just because you're red pilled or blue pill, that doesn't that doesn't show you kind of you know just because you view the world a certain way. There's no way for you to, there's no compass for you to act virtuous or act in purely out of self-interest. So what ends up happening when people have the truth revealed to them, especially if they've been living this blue pill reality for most of their lives, they had the red pill moment, you're, you're caught at this, at a crossroads where you have to decide, okay, now that you understand the reality of how things are, how women work, how society actually is, are you going to navigate through that new red pill reality with hope that you can, you know, navigate through that reality for a better life for your, for yourself and your friends and your entire life? Or are you going to navigate through it through a nihilistic worldview where you're like, oh crap, things are way different than I thought. It's not this, you know, rosy, awesome blue pill world. This sucks. It's all pointless, right? A lot of guys unfortunately end up doing that. And we're going to get into actually details of where certain types of people go into this, but a lot of people, for example, like incels, especially a lot of incels are red pill. They, they, they go into, you know, they understand the red pill. They understand hypergamy. And a lot of times because of that, they say, okay, well, everything's pointless. What am I going to do? I was born ugly, all this type of stuff. 
So well, we're going to dive into where that. Yeah, because I was going to say we're getting a little ahead of ourselves because we want to go sure. through each one. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the white pill, like you just said, the hope side, the positive side, the part of society side, the you know the way that we believe is the right way to do it. That's why this is the white pill podcast. Um, so basically now that you have the whole spectrum, you can understand the hopeful side, the nihilistic side, the imaginative side, the reality side, and there's not necessarily a right or wrong. There's, you get to decide where you want to be on the compass. That's why it's a compass. Like no one, you can't let anyone tell you that your way is wrong because the, the objective reality, we just don't know. We don't know what's right and what's wrong, what's virtuous, what's not. And then you can argue for either point. So we're going to say what we think is best, but you're allowed to choose anywhere you want to be on this, mm -hmm. on this compass. So what I want to start off with is the um, this blue. But basically where you would start on this or anywhere else is in the middle, which is a baby. Yeah. Okay, so as a baby, what happens? Do you have a worldview? Do you know what's going on in the world? No. So you don't have reality and you don't have imagination. Okay, are you a black pill or white pill? You have no idea, you're a baby, right? So you're a clean slate. So you always start in the middle. You're a clean slate before you drift in one of these directions of you know, your way of thinking. Now, what happens when you're a baby? Your parents you know, uh, teach you things. You learn about reality. You learn that your parents are there and then they're gone and then they come back. You get learn about food and poop in your diaper and all these things that go on. So you learn a little bit of reality. Right, so you drift towards that way, but then you also drift in imagination. You get an imaginary friend, you know, you you play, you things like that. So you drift in the realms of uh, reality and imagination. You kind of like go back and forth between the two. You're kind of like you know drifting in different directions, and then you know depending on how you're raised. If you're raised by a dad who's pulling you and telling you, you know, you got to be realistic, you'll be pulled in that direction. Or if you're like an ideologue or a um, you know, an entrepreneur that wants to build something cool, you're going to drift in this direction. And then as far as dating goes, are you watching Hollywood movies or are you getting it straight from your dad? Like the tough military dad telling you how it is. And so it really depends on how you're raised and which direction or without a dad, uh, but which directions you're going to drift in. And then once you've established your word view, then you start drifting in your directions towards the path of how you're going to navigate that. So you always start off from the middle and drift in your worldview and you've established your worldview. You're like, which path am I going to take the black mm -hmm. or the white? Because regardless of what worldview you end up taking, whether it's something that's more based in reality, something that's more based in imagination, you know, that, what, what, regardless of where you are on that spectrum, you're going to navigate through life through being hopeful for the future or for being nihilistic for the future. So there's a lot of guys who are red pill. They take this red pill reality. They understand what hypergamy is, for example, and they just become completely hopeless, mm -hmm. right? It sounds like you want to say something. Yeah, so I was going to say, so I'm going to actually have Kevin explain some of our analogies in sure. a second where things different. You know, because this is kind of out there, you got to figure out where certain uh, characteristics apply. But I thought of something cool, which is that you don't just like automatically spin off from baby land into like this person, right? You're going to be testing out all these things throughout your life, whether it's dating or anything else. And you're going to be like going in this direction and this, and you're kind of spiraled and then you go back in this way. And then as you age, you get more solidified in one quadrant. So if you're, you know, in your 30s to 40s, you end up down here. You end up down here, you end up here, you end up here, and you kind of like test everything out till you find what's you. And this is why right in the matrix, he says, we don't, uh, we don't free people after a certain age. They have trouble letting go. So as you age, you have trouble because you get stuck in your age groups and you end up stuck in your ways wherever you are. It could be good if it's stuck in a good place. Um, and some of the best people aren't stuck. They find a way to keep themselves free flowing, but a lot of people get stuck in their ways and they're hard to reach or they have trouble letting go. Uh, and that doesn't apply just for blue pill and trouble letting go and seeing the matrix. It applies for red pill as well. You get stuck in this way. You get stuck in that way. And the more you're stuck, the harder it is to help. And that's why with guys we coach, it's harder to coach older guys. Yeah. They're just so stuck in their ways. The younger guys are more towards the center and they can be pulled in different directions. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, I think that's a good analogy. Let's erase this. Yeah, 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 clear that up. <laughs> and then we'll start with, you'll, you'll just start labeling stuff. Yeah. So where do you want to start? Um, you want incel or white or incel versus loser? Why don't you do this? And I'll do this. Incel versus loser. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll give you green. Got it. Yeah. All right. So let's start with incels because uh, can I have? Oh, actually, I'm green, green, yeah, yeah, yeah. green. <laughs> I'm holding yeah, for yeah, a right. reason. Uh, so the thing is, a lot of people who are red pill just put the label of red pill on themselves, when the reality is they're actually black pilled. Again, the 
what we have to destroy kind of the ideal that the idea that red pill is a philosophy on its own. Like I, you, we kind of have to reject that idea because it doesn't really make much sense. The only thing it could possibly be tied to is a school of philosophy called pragmatism. But again, I mean, still, that's just it's, it's still a, of a fault. It's still a path. It's still a path. Because again, yeah. like when we're saying that we're white pill men, we're not talking about worldview. Yeah. We're not. Our worldview uh, is somewhat red pill. It's a little bit blue pill. Yeah. It's a spectrum. Whereas. We have drifted into the white spectrum of how we navigate that red pill world. So we're we could be red pill. You yeah. can consider us red pill because we're just seeing the reality for what it is, and then we're figuring out how to navigate. So that's white versus mm -hmm. black. So I think yeah, I think it's just at the end of the day, how you view the world can be totally different from how you use that information. Again, that was a good analogy. Was Cipher and Neo both took the red pill? Okay, so then how can there be one? red pill there is yeah it's how you use the red pill you they both got the same information that the matrix was a phony fake world okay what happened to neo he wanted to break it down and free everyone what happened to cypher he's like screw this put me back in because it was more fun i liked it right he wanted to indulge that's drugs that's like he wanted to delude himself he wanted to be a famous actor he wanted status right he's like plug me back in and then what he do tried to blow the whole thing up just to get back in so he's nihilistic yep. he gave up the world basically he's saying I'm in it for me. Screw the society. Screw the world. I just went back in to, to the pleasure world. Yeah. So he was nihilistic. He was black pill. So just because, you know, that's why red pill as a self doesn't make any sense because Neo and Cypher were both red pilled, but they had to choose different paths. One chose the white and one chose the And that's the also black. why you cannot use red pill versus blue pill as a judgment of ethics or virtue yeah. because it's simply just the way you view the world. Because Cypher took the red pill. But he's also nihilistic. He's like, this is all pointless. Put me, plug me back in, baby. I hate this new reality that I'm a part of, right? So he's clearly yeah. going to be somewhere. He's an down. incel. He's basically an incel. He's an incel. Right? Exactly. We're, we're he lost about Trinity. In a second. He yeah. wanted Trinity. He, <laughs> he did. He's he an wanted incel. Trinity and he lost Trinity. He yeah, lost Trinity. Perfect. He's an yeah. incel. Yeah. He wanted to fuck it's Trinity just... really badly. Trinity said no. He's like, so right, man. That's incel, right? Incel. Yeah, this is incel. So you're incel here. So you're black pilled and you're red pilled. That's the extreme. Because of both. I see a lot of guys in the manosphere talking about, well, oh, well, um, you know, red pill versus blue pill. Only blue pill guys like commit suicide or whatever, right? I've actually saw a video about that before I talked about it. It's just complete BS because yeah. most guys who are inceled who become uh, like Elliot Roger, for example, that guy was definitely red pill. He was not blue pill. Yeah. He understood it's like all these good looking girls are only with these, yeah. you know, whatever, right? Um, so yeah, so, so you could be the, the incels very often know what hypergamy is. And actually I take back a little bit what I said, Elliot Roger might've been blue pill. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if he knew about hypergamy and all these other types of things. It doesn't matter. Um, incels in general, guys who put that label on themselves, they understand hypergamy. They understand the reality of how a lot of women actually operate. They just think that they don't have what it takes and they lose hope based on that reality. Thus making them, pushing them this side toward the black pill, they're going to be down here. So they're highly, highly red pill. They're very based in reality. Don't have a whole lot of imagination, very based on what's actually going on, but they become extremely nihilistic because of that. Right? So I want to completely quash this idea that just red pill on its own, finding out the truth about reality of how it actually is, uh, isn't itself sufficient enough for you to be like, oh, I'm a good person. I'm, I'm an alpha, cool, awesome yeah. dude. Because, those, yeah. because yeah, a whole bunch of people who took the red pill end up becoming incels. <laughs> All right. So, so let's move on to loser. Sure. Can I just erase this so yeah, that we yeah. have space? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So... The counterpart to the, the counterpart to the incel, someone who is equally nihilistic, but uh, is is the loser, but not as based in reality. So these are the types of guys. You want to explain the loser? Yeah. So the loser is basically the blue pill nihilist, meaning he's bought into Hollywood's version of society. He's bought into his place as a loser that he can't improve his situation. So he's black pilled in the fact that he just thinks that the jocks get all the women. Now, some of that might be tied into hypergamy, but he doesn't see it necessarily like that. He just sees his place in society as loser. And he tries all the things he's seen on Hollywood movies and fails. And that's why he becomes more bitter because he's told, bring your flowers. He's told to do all the blue pill stuff. So he follows the blue pill path and then he becomes nihilistic because he's given up on it. He's bitter. It didn't work. None of it works. 
and he doesn't know any of the red pill stuff, so he doesn't know what he should be doing to change the situation. So he can be the most stuck of all. Now, incels are stuck because of their belief system. Loser's stuck because he has no idea what to do. Yeah. He's not just stuck because he knows this, the truth and gave up. He doesn't even know the truth. So he's like, he has no idea what to do unless he gets lucky and finds a way to be red pill because he's going to have to find out reality first before he can figure out how to fix and, it. And another thing as well, this can end up being very dangerous. People like this, they get exposed to the red pill and then they realize how things are. And they, so they're already kind of nihilistic. And they, they realize this, then they put and yeah. present women and blame women, unfortunately. Then if I could have the whiteboard extend out to here, <laughs> the, these guys end up not only just drifting down this side into red pill, sure, but then their nihilism increases even more because at the very least over here, they could have just kind of imagined that like, oh, then it may be one day they'll get lucky. That's like getting lucky. They'll think one day I'll get lucky, but I don't want to get too dark on it because again, it's age. If they're young enough, they can be dragged towards the white side. They can succeed. They can develop. A lot of guys, our students come to us feeling like losers and end up success stories in white pill, and they do very well. And so I don't want to discount the loser because they are imaginative. They believe more than the incel that they could change. So when they do get the exposed to the red pill, the loser has the best shot because once he learns the truth, he's like, well, maybe I could do something now. Now that I know something new, maybe I can try a new path. And the only time they really fail is when they try it on their own and they have no help. Mm -hmm. So really the loser's in a good position when he's young enough. If he's older again, it becomes much more difficult. But if the, user, if the loser is young enough and he becomes exposed to the red pill, then he really just needs a guide to pull him this yep. direction. He needs Absolutely. someone to help him. All right. right. So, so let's, let's explain. Let's do these corners. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you, I'll do the top and you do the bottom. Ready? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to do the. So, what is the counterparts? Because there's going to be four quadrants here. We're going to do a lot of different things. But the four quadrants, you're going to have loser, incel. And then in the top right is going to be counterparts to those, which is going to be the white knight. Okay. So the white knight, he is. Not he doesn't feel view himself as a loser, even though he is. He views himself as a savior, as a positive, as a, he has a high self esteem of himself, and he's imagining his success. So he's deluding himself into thinking he's a success story. He's white pilled in the sense that he's always trying to be virtuous, though he's failing at it. And he's he's very hopeful. Like he's very hopeful. He truly hopeful. believes that yeah. him simping for whatever girl exactly. he's into, you're like, oh, this is the thing that's going to make her finally bang me and stop banging all those chads. Yeah. Like, like he's actually hopeful. That's why like, this is so appropriate. The white pill, he's white. Yeah. White and knight. actually, you know, he's, he's in a positive state of mind. He's has high self-esteem. Yeah. He's not going to commit suicide. He feels good about himself. The only way that he fails really is the minute his delusion is up and he starts drifting into loser incel. He starts going these directions when he gives up the delusion, but as long as he, he maintains his virtual reality, he's safe here. It's basically, this is this is a perfect, like the Shawn Mendes, you know, I know I can treat you better than he can. If you listen to that song, it's the ultimate White Knight song because he truly believes in those lyrics that he's a better person and he truly yeah. believes that like the girl just needs to see that. And right? then the problem is he gets smacked with reality when he loses. That's why he drops <laughs> the other ones. If he never actually act, if he acts on this stuff, he ends up losing because he's blue pilled. He's wrong. So he ends up drifting towards loser incel. The, the only way to really stay there in his delusion is never try. Mm -hmm. That's really only his way. So if he stays home and just, you know, he talks about it online, he's safe. Yeah. The minute he puts himself out there to try is when he starts failing yeah. badly. And that's so. why it's important to distinguish between black pill and white pill because this, the white knight is blue pill. He's operating off of imagination. He's not aware of, you know, hypergamy, all these things that women are actually attracted to in men. He's holding on to these Hollywood ideas that he was growing up on. Same thing with the loser guy, except this guy isn't out there trying to white knight for girls. He just instead, you know, just thinks it's hopeless and just plays Dungeons and Dragons with his fellow nerd friends on the weekend, right? right. But they're still technically blue pill. You want to do the right? last so they're different. Yes. So the last corner here, this one's actually uh, quite good. <laughs> this is the stereotypical 50s dad, like the leave it to beaver dad, where he's extremely based in reality and, he's, and he's, uh operates in the light and he's not nihilistic about the world. He's hopeful. He's hopeful for his, his, for his children, right? He's hopeful for the future. 
And he, he doesn't think, oh, the world is over and everything. He's, but he's very based in reality. He's like, okay, so here's how things are. You're going to, you're going to, you know, work hard in school. You're going to play sports. You're going to go to college. You're going to get a good, nice, stable job. You're going to get a 401k. You're going to, you know, buy into the American dream, get your own home and raise your own family and do the same thing. Right. And, and with, with him, he's a, it's a good influence. He's a positive, but right. the problem is lacking in imagination, lacking in things is he's actually not as much a danger to himself as the people around him because the fifties dad now, unlike the other ones, he's not harming himself, but he's harming the people around him because he's stuck in this reality. So he's stuck in like this mindset of, let's say right now, go to college, get a degree, whatever, that's going to get you a good job. But that's the current reality or his reality. That's not the future reality, which is a little bit imaginative, but we have to evolve with it. So we have to think like, what's the, going to be the jobs of the future? What's the dating structure of the future? And so he's stuck in his old mindset, which worked for him, but the danger is more to the people around him, his children, that he's giving them the advice based on his reality, which has now moved on to some future, right? So that's the risk of the 50s dad, even though it's, a, you know, it's admirable to do it and he means well, he's white pill, he means very well, he does damage <clears throat> by accident, right? Yeah, and also the 50s dad is kind of like the, you know, a lot of the red pill guys look back at the 50s, at the culture of the 50s through rose-colored glasses. Like, look how everything was back then. Women were, you know, it's more traditional gender roles, the way that things should be. That's what the red pill guys say. And there's some legitimacy to a lot of that. But, um, but at the more, same time, yeah. you know, you, you only focus on the parts that seem good, right? So this 50s dad, for example, I think we were talking about a bit before off camera, you know, he's also the type of guy who, when he gets older, he doesn't want things to change. He's like my way or the highway type thing. He's the, one of those just the guys that's like, oh, these damn kids and their music nowadays, like, you know. The, yeah, he the, can't the, the, handle the change. Yeah. And then also you have, I mean, you have more racism, more misogyny. It's like all sugarcoating <clears throat> all this other negativity that was around back then. You have, mm -hmm. you know, other wars that were going on, other people being treated as lesser. It's not as beautiful as it seems, just like every yeah. generation. Is but even so, for the most part, 50s dad is definitely a good ideal to strive for. It's just, he's just so based in reality and unimaginative, again, the stereotype of him, um, that it does kind of affect people of future generations, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, he just wants the status quo. Yeah. So now we've, we've pinpointed the corners. Let's pinpoint the ends of the spectrum as far as blue, red, black, and white go. So uh, we try to think, okay, so you can drift just from the center and straight down the line. So who is the type of person that would be blue-pilled and really kind of straight the line between black and white, which is gray, meaning that you're kind of more indifferent. So when you're straightening that line between black and white, when you're gray, that means that you're not doing good for the world, but you're not doing evil either. You can be in it for yourself. You can be in it, whatever, but you're, you're actively maybe trying not to hurt people, but you're not trying to help people. Right? So this would be like, we said the beach bomb, <laughs> which is a funny name. But if you really think about it, we actually watched a movie about this. So it gave us the yeah. idea. There's Matthew McConaughey, but the idea of the beach bomb, and there's other examples of this, but basically is a guy who likes to get drunk. He likes to have fun. You know, he's just in it for himself, but not as a selfish way. That's just the way he wants to live his life. So he ends up in the imagination world. He's not, he doesn't want to be in reality. That's why he takes drugs. That's why he gambles. That's why he drinks. He just wants to have a fun life, which can be admirable in some ways. But in other ways, he doesn't, you know, build anything or do anything in reality. He doesn't have, hold down a good job. He's just in it to have fun. And then what happens is, so what's his blackness? So his blackness is he has no malicious intent. He's not trying to hurt anyone. He hurts people by accident. He drives drunk and accidentally kills someone or hurts someone, totally not thinking that way but just being reckless ends up hurting people. So that's the black side. Then the white side is he actually is friendly to everyone. He holds no hate towards everyone. He sees a homeless guy in the street and brings him into the bar and buys him drinks and feeds him. And he takes care of people when it's convenient for him, right? So whenever he wants to have fun with people, he's playing the white side. He's gonna be welcoming, no negativity, just come on man, smoke some weed. And the black side is gonna be uh, you know, when he accidentally hurts people. So that's why he straddles the line. And that's why, but he's all blue. He's all in the, in the clouds of imagination. Now on the opposite side of the spectrum is the red reality. And that's going to be uh, what we call the falfa. And the falfa can again be on both sides, just like the beach bum can be on both sides. But the falfa, what is a falfa? So it's, we, we name this, it's a fake alpha. 
So this can take its entirely own topic. But basically a fake alpha is someone who pretends to be an alpha because he thinks that's the ideal to strive for and he wants to be that and whatever. So what makes him fake is that just like a billionaire doesn't walk around telling people they're a billionaire, if you have to tell people you're an alpha, you're not an alpha, you're a fake alpha, right? So these are guys that could be, you know, muscle bound, they could be not, they could be driving around fancy car, whatever, they're, they're overcompensating for some insecurity they have. They might be showing photos with lots of women because they don't feel like they're a good enough coach without one. So And they tend to be the guys also that are always like red pill this, red pill that. Yeah. Like, there's always just shoving the red pill down your throat. Exactly. And and they yeah. feel the need to put people down. A real alpha does not feel the need to put people down because he knows his position in society is high enough. <clears throat> so if he feels like he has to push people below him, it means he doesn't actually believe he's an alpha. He has to push people down to elevate himself. So any guy who uses the term, who calls people beta or cuck or snowflake or whatever is a fake alpha because they feel the need to elevate themselves. Anyone who unironically uses this. <laughs> well, no, ironically I mean, use it. Yeah, yeah, but let's throw that out because a lot of people unironically sure. use it. They just use it to put someone down. And if you're using it in your comments, you still kind of mean it. Honestly, they say you can say it's ironic all day, but most people actually mean it because they're do what they're doing is they're trying to elevate themselves and push someone down to make themselves more alpha. So they're fake. Bas awesome. Basically, like within the mainstream, for example, when you say red pill, a lot of a lot of people who aren't part of the manosphere, they they kind of cringe a little bit because they imagine the stereotype of the fake alpha who unfortunately isn't a good, you know, fair representation of the red pill movement as a whole, but they're very prevalent among the red pill movement. And they're going to talk more. That's part of the reason why, because a lot of these types of guys are what's associated with what's become the red pill movement, even though we are technically red pill, right? Um, that's why we can't associate ourselves personally as like, we don't go around saying, you know, we're the red pill guys. Like, ideally what the red pill should be sure yeah. but in terms of what the red pill has become and the fact that there's some influencers out here uh that are basically this i'm gonna call is it cool if i call one out right now should i not no, i'm not gonna not, call right out. now we're not gonna call out this is an important video we gotta make it everyone's <laughs> cool with it make it everyone yes everyone's gotta be cool with this <laughs> yeah. another video for call outs okay, we'll do another okay, call okay. video but anyways so what you have to think about is okay you're watching on youtube or you're uh you use the term influencer well, guess what almost every influencer is going to be a alpha why a real alpha doesn't feel the need to for attention doesn't need for fame doesn't need to be an influencer he's not trying to get cloudy he already has it sure. right and so a true alpha would never get influence for influence sake they get it off something else so if you want to look at it like in terms of influence around the only influencers that are true alphas would be like Leonardo DiCaprio because he got there some other way. His attention wasn't like, how do I become famous? It was, how do I become a good actor? Mm -hmm. Maybe a famous actor, but my focus is acting. I want to be known for acting. He didn't want to be known for being Leonardo DiCaprio. That's what a fake alpha is, is chasing clout for the sake of clout, mm -hmm. chasing fame. That's what a fake alpha is because they're not good enough on their own. Chasing, they don't have a skill. Chasing status. Chasing status. Yeah. Now, you can chase status as far as like your profession or what you want to do, but you just want to be known for your thing. Yeah. And that's fine. That's that's your purpose. Um, but that's why there's so many fake alphas around is because that's the nature of inf becoming an influencer is yeah. trying to become a fake alpha. It's more so, um, it's also like just the guys, again, that just kind of shoved the red pill down their throat. And these the, oftentimes, a lot of the guys that are first introduced to the red pill, a lot of times they go down this route before they... Um, before they, they choose to go more the hopeful route, which is what well, we're trying to preach yeah. with the white pill, or before, unfortunately, they become more black. But this, yeah, and this is not just dating. This is like every industry. This is like yeah. most of YouTube right here. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but anyways, so why are they on both sides of the spectrum? Because one is their main problem is their own personal insecurity. So they don't really harbor negativity against people in general. They harbor it when they're attacked, when they feel attacked. So the, the, they straddle both the lines because... They, they do view themselves as good people. They do want to be virtuous, but they get dragged into the black and the negativity when they feel attacked. Their insecurities are opened up. So when someone attacks them, um, you know, they might lie about something. They might get revenge. They might whatever. And so they're constantly vacillating between the two because they want to do good, but their insecurities makes them want revenge on people that makes them want to hate the people that hate them or the comments or feed into the negativity. And they keep going negative when people are like making fun of them. Mm -hmm. Right, a true alpha doesn't care if someone makes fun of them, but they want to be virtuous, but they keep going back and forth, and that's why they're on both sides of the line. Yeah, and there's um, some red pill influencers that are definitely, unfortunately, a lot of popular ones that are towing the line this way, but um, there's some good ones as well, yeah. like you know, 
Rello Tomasi, the rational male guy. I mean, he's definitely more on this side. I don't consider himself a fake alpha at all. Um, but yeah, we'll get into other examples. Yeah, yeah. But the, we're going to just cover very generic examples, sure. and another video Absolutely. we can cover more specific. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so the real spectrum and why we've come up with white pill and black pill, which is really cool, um, is really the extremes of, of good versus evil. And so we have the blue pill imagination, we have the red pill reality, and then we have to establish which path. You know, the dark side, the light side, the dark force, you know, Jedi and the Sith. And so on the, the darkest side, we have, uh, we would say Hitler, right? So Hitler would be the, the pure evil, the darkness, the, um, you know, just, just pure evil, creating something nihilistic where just like wanting to see the world burn. Right. And, you know, we've talked about this where like psychopaths are kind of like not even on the spectrum because they have no feeling. But this would be someone who actively enjoys that evil nature. That's part of who they are. That's what they want. Mm -hmm. Now, also, why is he on this line of spectrum and not like, you know, why isn't he red pill black? Why isn't he uh, blue pill black? And it's because he has to operate in both worlds. So the red reality is like military um, very you know, orderly. Very orderly. How does he take over the world? And then Blue Pill is imagination. That's how he gets people to follow him. That's how he built the following. He was democratically the, elected. The Aryan race. The, the Aryan ideas race. of like, you know, words. Yes. Yeah. And that's the visionary that he had to, in a negative way, he was a visionary, right? He was a, he draw, drew so many people into the negative. He was democratically elected because he was a visionary, but he also had the the reality base to do both. So he was straddling the line between mm -hmm. between both imagination and reality, and he was pure evil. Mm -hmm. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the Buddha. Now some people would say might say that the Buddha is the ideal, right? That that's the enlightenment stage that we all want to get to, the egolessness, which is really hard. But also when you look at the Buddha's life, a lot of people might think they don't want that. He gave up his wife and kids and family. He lived a life of poverty and servitude, and it just sounds terrible, but he used that to achieve enlightenment. So it's a noble pursuit. So he's the ultimate white because he was transcending his ego. He was transcending earth and, you know, and, and never called himself a God. He said everyone could do it. And it was like this pureness of like being where everyone can be this enlightened being and, you know, virtuous as they want and undetached and unsuffering. And why is he on the line? Because again, same thing. He strung the line between imagination and reality. He took the reality knowing that he had to sacrifice everything real in his life in order to achieve enlightenment in his imagination, right? So he took a reality and took that like poverty life style in order to, in order to reach that imagination. And so he's able to balance between reality and what is and imagination. And if you know anything about Buddhism, you know that all the imagination and faith is based on accepting reality for what it is. So it's a whole philosophical thing. So I think that's pretty cool. So now we've established the beach bomb is the most blue. We've established the falfas are the most red. We've established Hitler is the most black. We've established Buddha is the most white. And then we can finally come up with some kind of in-betweens, yeah. some middle grounds and all these, because we have all our corners mm -hmm. done and Kevin's going to lead us through. And then also we're, I'm going to talk about what's the ideals to be within. Some good examples. I think all of us will agree are some good examples. But before that, let's dive into more this middle ground here where um, people are operating in darkness, but, um, but it might be a little bit less obvious than someone like Hitler. So let's start off here first with someone by the name of Bernie Madoff. So for those of you who aren't familiar, oh wait, you want to make it black? I want to do black. And black. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll write the names for you. All right. So for those of you who don't know who Bernie Madoff is, um, during the 08 financial crisis, he, you know, he had this, his whole entire operation, his whole business got shut down. And what basically what people saw is that he, for basically 30, 40 years, he had this giant Ponzi scheme that he was doing. For those of you who don't know what Ponzi scheme is, I'm sure you guys know that it's like a pyramid scheme, right? Where there's actually not really any money. It's like, you just constantly, uh, you know, get new investors and those investors make money. It's like, it's, it's a whole sham. Right. So someone like him, the reason that Bernie Madoff is, first of all, in the black, because Bernie Madoff, when he was interviewed and um, he talked about this, he knew that, you know, um, he would get caught eventually. He knew that one day, you know, he would uh, I don't know what the term is, but basically he would be held accountable for his actions. 
So he took a very nihilistic worldview of like, this is all pointless anyway. I'm just going to live life to the fullest and live like a, a billionaire. I don't care the consequences when that happens. And what happened with Bernie Madoff is his sons, his family didn't know about it. His sons ended up killing themselves, committing suicide once they found out that their entire life and what their dad stood for was, was that way. And, um, the re oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> and the reason that he was red pilled is because he he knew what he was doing, right? Oh, what yeah. was the other reason we red pilled again? Well, no, he, he he knew what he was doing, meaning he wasn't deluding himself yes, that he was a good it. person or not. Yes. He knew he was doing bad. He's things. very based in reality, and the reason that that's relevant to talk about is because we can see the opposite of people who are equally nihilistic, yeah. but also actually believe they're doing a good thing or the the suckers that get suckered into like multi-level marketing schemes for example or like uh the fake gurus i'm not going to name fake gurus here um <laughs> but if you know what i'm talking about the fake gurus the guys that say hey you know i'm going to teach you how to make all this money and and it only you only have to work 10 minutes a day and all you have to do is just have these little you know just send out these postage stamps and you'll become a millionaire like those types of people and those a lot of those people are truly delusional enough where they actually think that they're doing good for the world right but on top of they've rationalized they've rationalized so long. they so try much. they don't want to be seen as a bad person so they convince themselves convince yeah. themselves they're doing good even though they're in the back of their mind somewhere they yeah. know they're scamming people yeah so that's why like they're still living in this imagination land where they actually think they're doing good but the reason that they're nihilistic Man, I'm sorry. You, you're probably better explaining this. Okay. Reason yeah. So the reason they're nihilistic is because they are in it for themselves. They don't believe in actually supporting society. They're trying to get theirs. Yeah. They want to get paid. They're like, well, my business didn't work this way. So if I, if I, you know, I've earned this right. I worked hard. I deserve this money. So fuck everyone else. I'm gonna make this money. It's legal. As long as it's legal, I'm not doing anything illegal. So it's their fault for giving me their money. They're fools, right? Yeah. And so I've earned this. It's mine. Yeah. And so fuck society. So it's nihilistic because they're saying fuck society, but then they don't want to see themselves as bad people. So they got to go imaginary yeah. and think, oh, well, wait, 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 I'm saving the world somehow. And they yeah. got to keep rationalizing, even though somewhere in their subconscious, they know what they're doing is wrong. Yeah. And then on top of that too, if they were actually hopeful in their ability to actually run a legitimate business. They want to do something that's, um, cause people that get into MLMs and those types of things, they're trying to look for quick money, right? Because they're not hopeful that they actually have what it takes to operate a successful business and do it the legitimate route. So that's another reason that they're in and, that block. And then the last thing is you can, they can actually get sucked in that way. It's actually the good thing. Cause again, these aren't static. You can get pulled in different directions. So I wanted to actually bring this because Let's say they were on the white side. So I think they could get sucked in this way. And I'll tell you why. Because they want to do something good. They want to start a legitimate business, right? So if they start a legitimate business, they find a business coach, right? And they sign up with someone. There's two different business coaches. One of them is an MLM coach and one of them is an e-commerce coach or a legitimate business coach. And so depending on which one they sign up with, one leads them down a white path. Now, maybe it's a tough path and it's e-commerce, which is hard, but it's a legitimate business. Uh, and then the other, so one one's this way and one's taking them saying, well, sign up for my own mind. So if they accidentally happen to go with this one right here and they sink a bunch of money into this, thinking it's a, a white path, then they're stuck and they're like, should I give up even though I know this is a scam or should I delude myself into thinking I'm doing good? Yep. And so people can actually, through no fault of their own, obviously it's brainwashing, so can get sucked into that and think, oh shit, I'm hurting people, but I'm not because I... I want to do good for the world. Mm -hmm. And so they get sucked that way because they thought they were going this way. And that's so the biggest they, difference between these two. Someone like Bernie Madoff is scamming people and knows he's scamming people and will fully admit it when confronted. Yeah. If, if there's like, you know, no way for him to escape, you'd be like, yeah, I knew what I was doing is, all along. It's much more right? pure evil than... Exactly. Yeah. And, um, and these people, they truly have to either deluded themselves into thinking that they're not actually scamming people or they actually do not think they're scamming people even though technically they are, yeah. right? And there's a lot of those around here with the age of the internet, but they've always been around. Yeah. All right, so let's go more toward the cool ideal people. So right here, we're gonna put in Tony Robbins. Now, Tony Robbins, I know some people, some people might think he's cringy or whatever, but I think, you know, most people would agree, regardless of what he says, uh, he's definitely in it for the right reasons. And I think he's very well respected among most people. Um, for me, I'm not, 
I'm, I'm kind of indifferent about Tony Robbins. I think some of his content's great. He's not like my hero, but for some people he is. And I think the reason that he speaks to so many people is because he's genuinely authentic and hopeful for humanity. And I think, you know, even his critics can, can agree with that. I think he's doing it for the right reasons. The reason that we put him a little bit more on the blue pill side is because it's a little bit more based in imagination. You listen to the types of self-improvement things that Tony Robbins talks about. Sure, he has a lot of practical things, but he's never going to talk about um, how the advice that he gives should be different for men versus women. It's right? also very it's like very mindset. Very mindset, yeah. And mm -hmm. again, just because it's more blue pill, and it's more mainstream, like everyone in the mainstream knows who Tony Robbins is, mm -hmm. right? But just because it's mainstream doesn't mean that it's bad. Just because it's blue pill, technically doesn't mean And it's mean only it's like bad. slightly in that direction. They're not up in the clouds. A lot of yeah. people follow Tony Robbins do the hard work to make businesses successful. Exactly. So he's just slightly on the blue side a lot. You can follow him up into the clouds and the secret and the law of attraction. I don't do think he really teaches that too much. He no, does, no, 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 does no. neuro-linguistic programming. Yeah, no, no. What I'm saying is you can follow this uh, up. So yeah. <laughs> you can take a journey of like, oh, I discovered Tony Robbins. Oh, I discovered the secret, yeah. right? You can go down that journey <laughs> or you can say, I discovered Tony right. Robbins. Oh, I discovered Gary Vee. Oh, yeah. I discovered, and you can go yeah, either yeah. direction that you want from him because he's in that mindset area. You can That's go, right. you can go more woo woo, yeah. or you can go more reality. So yeah. it's like hard work. Yeah, this is like the people that follow like the secret. They're like right near the white. Exactly. Night. It's exactly. like oh, if I just the law of attraction, if just I the vibrations of, of the yeah. universe makes it attract to me. But you Whatever. can see how Tony <laughs> Robbins gives you the option to go more woo woo, or yeah. gives you the option to go more grounded yeah. and Gary Vee. And let's right? let's talk about the more practical side of this yeah. here. Um, Everyone knows who this guy is, Joe Rogan. So Joe Rogan, he's definitely very hopeful for humanity. I don't see any kind of nihilism from him. Even among his critics, I, you know, I don't think people say that he's like a bad person. I think everyone agrees he's a good guy. Sometimes they just disagree with him or they don't find it funny or whatever. Um, but he's very much based in reality for the most part. He still has kind of his blue pill. His alien still getting himself. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah, but he still he's, he's he takes a stand against social justice wars and things of that sort for the most part. You know, he says, um, you know, he's like, yeah, there's definitely differences between men and women, and he he has clear lines of what he uh, accepts. But he's definitely much more based in reality. But he's also, you know, whether people realize it or not, he's very influential within the self improvement space. Mm -hmm. He brings on a lot of self improvement type guests. Yeah. It's just a little bit more practical, kind of like, here's what happened in my life. Here's what you want to do in your life, as opposed to Tony Robbins. Of course, he does that too, but it's a little bit more kind of uh, out there. It's a little bit more out there. But you can, Joe Rogan is much more grounded. But the reason, I mean, they're actually closer to the line. They can float in different places. Joe Rogan mm -hmm. can talk about aliens and spirituality. Tony Robbins can talk about business. Yeah. And other so they're, they're kind of floating around this line where they can float back and forth. They just generally hang out more on the red side and more on the blue side. That's just where they generally and, hang and out. And regardless of that, so I think we pretty much covered most of what we want to talk about here. I mm -hmm. think now we should talk about where is the ideal place for you to strive for. Yeah. So can I have one of the yeah. things real quick? So what I like to say yeah. is you want to start a little bit above the, the Tony Robbins line, kind of come down here a bit. <laughs> yeah. And then a little bit over to this Joe Rogan side. Yeah. So, so this is the ideal to strive for because I think regardless of whether you're more red-pilled or blue-pilled, I think everyone for the most part in some way respects Joe Rogan, Tony Robbins, yeah, everyone definitely. respects the Buddha, Good, exactly. right? So ideally you're gonna be in this range here. So yeah. it's okay to still have some of those blue-pilled ideas in the sense of being more imaginative. You don't have to be completely based and then have, you know, know all about hypergamy and stuff. So here's a perfect example. Think of all the great people that you know that don't even know what the word hypergamy means. <laughs> okay? Are you just going to automatically say that they're not enlightened or whatever yeah. or they're not doing the, stuff right? Also, like red pill would be like go out for your own and like your your animalistic nature and don't be nice to people. And then like think, you know, the, the guy who's genuinely nice to everyone, he's not trying to get anyone. He's not fake nice. He just is nice to everyone. Yeah. That's more blue pill. And the, that person people genuinely like the reason why people don't like nice people is they're usually not actually nice. They're just pretending yeah, to be pretend. to get something. So when you times you meet now, then you're not necessarily going to get status and women from that, but people like a person that's genuinely nice just for the sake of it. It's actually really hard to find. Most people are out to get something. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so. then, yeah. So, and again, like we talked about before, you don't want to be too much to, to the point where you're like the fifties dad. That seems like an ideal, but again, the fifties dad, the stereotypical fifties dad doesn't have too much of an imagination. And he's the type of guy that's a 
usually a really good person and a good dad and a good mentor, but he, he doesn't have any vision for the future and he kind of gets left behind in the times. Well, it, it, to be, to bring it more present to is it's not just fifties. It's like you right now stuck where you are and not advancing. It's like being a 20 year old and then you're 30 and you're still acting like a 20 year old, right? You're not planning for your future. You're not, you know, you're partying all the time, right? So it's great to party and have an imagination, but the opposite is just as bad where you're like always focused on career, always focused on one thing and not thinking about the future. Mm -hmm. And you're always thinking like, or the people that are like, oh, I got to get my career first before I relax and I travel or have a vacation, right? You're always focused on doing the same thing that you're told to do rather than going on a vacation and enjoying yourself, yep. right? So, you, so it's like drifting into this area where you can get, you know, all the good stuff and the respect and admiration that you yeah. want. You basically um, don't want to be way too realistic with everything where you have no imagination and you're just way too practical. And honestly, it makes you really boring <laughs> and yeah. you don't want to be way too, you know, too up in the cloud, like woo woo up in the cloud. That stuff's really interesting and it's cool and it, it's innovative and it helps to make this reality one day even more special over time, especially, but that's, that's where innovations and inventions come from. Like this blue pill spectrum, there's, you know, a lot of the, the greatest creators in everyone are, are blue pill. We talked about earlier, Thomas Edison, um, a lot of the people in Silicon Valley, right? Like a lot of the founders of the social media companies, you don't think that they're probably not all like super, super red pill. Like no, a lot of them have to have that vision. A lot of them have that vision. But that's a risk too, because everyone I will live in Silicon Valley, everybody thinks they're going to be the next Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. And so that's a danger. They're not grounded in reality. So it's really a yeah. balance. And this is where you hang out mixed. in all that's of them. That's the ideal. Um, that's where that's the ideal. But the number one mistake you can make from watching this, there's one big mistake you make from watching this, that's assuming that you're just placed on the map somewhere. Mm -hmm. You get to choose where you're at. You can change. You can, no matter where you're now, the older you are, the less likely you are to change. But no matter what, no matter what age you actually are, you don't have to fit into any one of these categories. No one puts you in that category. You put yourself in it. So if you're feeling like down in the dumps and whatever negative, you have the choice to move back to this side. That's all entirely a choice because it's all this, everything here is mental. Yeah. So the worst thing you can do is let someone put you in a, in a category or put yourself in a category and stay there uh -huh. unless you are where you actually want to be. Now, some people want to be pure evil. I can't help you there. If you want that, no, that's a legitimate stance. I can't yeah. tell you if you want to be pure evil, I can't tell you not to be. That's you get to choose where you're on this map. But if you want to be a respected person in society, if you want to be a good person, if you want to get all the women in a positive way, right? Or one woman in a positive way, you have these options here for you. And the worst thing you can do is just give up and say you're stuck somewhere on this thing because you have a choice to move wherever you want. And here's another thing too, um, this probably goes without saying, but at least for now, this compass is more for directed toward men. Um, it's hard to say that this would apply to women. Well, we may go a different one for yeah, women. Maybe, but yeah. yeah, But you know, if That'd you're a woman watching this, you could maybe apply this we, in some ways. We, we'll, try, we'll try, we'll try. We'll try one. But okay. also another thing, we're, we're going to wrap up in a second here because my battery is about to die. <laughs> I think um, that's every episode. Yeah, I know, right? So, what we're planning to do is actually create a compass test, similar to that political compass test, which this is, which inspired this. Uh, we want to make a test as well, so that you know kind of where you're at. Like if you're more so, uh, a little bit more imaginative, a little bit more based in reality. If unfortunately you're a little bit more nihilistic, if you're a little bit more hopeful, right? They and can then, always change. That's why you can always change. That's why the test is so. But important. it's also good to see where you're currently at, and then. We're also going to have examples of like, you know, famous people that you could relate to that are possibly kind of in that same area. And then you can kind of just make a game plan of what you want to do from there. And the best way, you know, um, my favorite quote of all time, I always quote it it's by Socrates, know thyself. It's the most powerful quote of all time, that two word quote. If the better you can understand yourself, the better that you can uh, improve your life situation, improve the people around you and inspire hope with others. And that's what the white pill is all about, oh, baby. Yeah. Getting into that white pill zone, to be yeah. that white pill man. So we're gonna we're gonna make that quiz as soon as it's ready. We're gonna put it in the description. Yes. So thank make sure you to check there. for watching. Let let us know what you think of this whole thing. Um, we'd love to know your input and we just spread this around, man. I think regardless of if you're more black pilled, if you're more red pilled, if you prescribe to either of those ideas, if you're white pilled, um, I think you would really benefit from just spreading this around just out of curiosity just trying it yourself to see where you land you might think that you're the most red pill guy ever we're not but you're actually not we don't know. that's <laughs> right? the whole point of the quiz exactly so thanks so much for watching guys 
when we come out with this quiz, go ahead and take it. We'll leave a link in the description below for when it comes out. And um, yeah, right on. This is going to be huge. I think right. this is great. This is, this is a good way for us, me personally, to kind of gauge like where I am on the morality spectrum. And, and here's one, one last thing before the battery dies out. You can use this as a way of judging actions as well, not just where you are personally. It's like, well, I'm about to take this action. Is this, is this action going to be, what quadrant is it going to be in? Yeah, right. is it going to help people or hurt people? Is it going to mm -hmm. be an imaginative thing or grounded in reality? Yep.